Thank you for coming to the press conference. The Chief Executive will give you a presentation using PowerPoint before taking questions. If there are no problems, um, Chief Executive, please. Friends from the media, um, the general public of Hong Kong, I'd like to give you an update of the epidemic in Hong Kong. I'd like to also give you some information about the announcement made on the 5th of February, about 10 days ago, in relation to the setting up of um, uh, a fund, we have made use of the 10 days, consulted various sectors. We have secured the uh, source of the funding. So I'd like to give you some information in relation to that. In the past week, there has been an increase in the number of confirmed confirmed cases. At half past four, the uh, Center for Health Protection of the Department of Health has announced that the latest number of confirmed cases stands at 56. It shows that um, the situation is still and difficult, and um, the government has attached a lot of importance to that. The day before yesterday, the first uh, patient of a confirmed case was discharged. And thanks uh, to the um, care of uh, the healthcare staff, I hope that uh, other patients uh, will be discharged shortly. Well, so far there hasn't been extensive community infection, and basically all the cases can be traced. Um, there, among the different cases, uh, there is one case uh, that took place in the Chinese New Year that uh, involved uh, 11 other place, uh, cases um, that uh, involved also a family, uh, a dinner gathering. So we have to pay attention to that and avoid uh, um, uh, attending these, care, these uh, gatherings. Yesterday, I have, together with my expert panel, including Professor Yung Kwok Yong, um, Professor uh, Leung um, Chak Wai, and Professor Kut Fukuda, as well as one other expert. Our discussion um, centered around the fact that we have to continue with the containment strategy to cut uh, the infection, the chain of infection. In the past month or so, all our work has been scientific, science-based. We have got the support of experts. Whenever there are in major incidents taking place, well, in the past week, there were two incidents. First is the, the cruise ship. World Dream. On the 5th of February, the cruise ship carrying 1,800 plus passengers arrived in Hong Kong. Uh, 1,700 uh, of the passengers are Hong Kongers, and there are also 1,800 uh, crew members. In order to secure public health, to safeguard public health, we have, to get, uh, together with our port control, uh, require passengers to stay on board the cruise ship. We found from the itinerary that um, there has been a number of confirmed cases, although that um, those are 1,800 plus passengers have no direct contact with those confirmed cases. In order to be cautious, uh, we agree that uh, we have to conduct uh, with proper quarantine procedures. The cruise. Uh, cruise ship company cooperated with us and provided assistance. On the 8th of February, we have uh, sought advice from experts. And we started um, testing for the virus for the 1,800 passengers because there are the 1,800 crew members because they might have come into contact with the uh, patients of confirmed cases. All those tests have been completed on the by the 9th of February, and all of the t these tests are negative. So we allowed um, the passengers to uh, to uh, disembark. The cruise company wrote to me after the incident, expressing their views about. Um, our approach in dealing with the case. We have used a very stringent approach, and they uh, agree with that. They are willing to support our work and to cooperate. So they are uh, satisfactory towards the way we handled this case. Another incident is Hong Mei House in Cheong Hong Estate. On the 10th of February in the evening, we found that um, 
Well, uh, there has been confirmed cases at A O A zero seven of the same block at different um, levels. Well, we have sought advice from the experts. Professor Yun Kuang Yong has personally given us a lot of his views. We have taken the initiative to carry out investigations of um, the hundred or so residents living in flat A07. We have made arrangements for them to stay in quarantine centers for the Department of Health as well as experts to carry out investigations. In this block, there are 30 stories or so. At the same time, uh, we have uh, sent uh, cleaners uh, to uh, step up uh, cleans cleansing. The housing department today has completed the cleaning work of various stories. We have also uh, inspected the, um, the plumbing. Most of them are in order. A small number of them have had their uh, pipe system alterated. Actions have already been taken. The CHP has also conducted uh, tests of, uh, on those people who are in quarantine centers. And now the matter of concern is Hong Kong people who are um, stranded outside Hong Kong. That includes uh, those who are still uh, in uh, Wuhan and passengers on board of uh, Diamond Princess. We have received a uh, call for assistance of uh, 1,100, including 1,200 Hong Kong people in over th uh, 30 cities in Hubei province. About 10 Hong Kongers have um, contracted the illness and they are being treated. In relation to the cruise ship, there are 330 Hong Kong people, 200 of of or uh, also of them have Hong Kong passports. Eleven of them are confirmed cases. They are receiving treatment in the, in the in the hospitals. Hong Kong ETO, that is uh, the Tokyo ETO, as well as the Wuhan uh, office, together with immigration department, provide all the assistance required. Once we have. Uh, formulated uh, um, plans in relation to logistics, uh, transport, as well as healthcare. We will uh, arrange for them to come back to Hong Kong as soon as possible. Now I move on to another matter. Today is the seventh day when we have put in place the mandatory quarantine order. It started on the 8th of February. From that day onwards, uh, all those people who have um, arrived from the mainland, including visitors as well as Hong Kong people, will have to go through a mandatory quarantine period of 14 days. In general, it has been implemented smoothly. The purpose of this, uh, of this policy is to greatly reduce the number of people crossing the border in order to control the, um, the, the contagion. Most of the people who cross the border are Hong Kong people. In the past few days, there has been a sharp drop of um, people crossing the border. It has been reduced by 80%. That also applies uh, to those people who use uh, the Hong Kong airport to enter uh, Hong Kong. In relation to the uh, two land boundary control points. Well, um, uh, there are about 1,000 people using the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge Hong Kong um, border control points. A lot of them t uh, come from uh, Macau and, and the mainland for the Shenzhen Bay. All, pe all of, the, vi all, all of the, um, um, the passenger flow came from the mainland, but uh, they only account for about uh, several hundred. We have issued about 5,326 um, um, quarantine orders, 90% of them are Hong Kong people and they stay at their own home uh, for quarantine. We make use of um, real-time location sharing, the smart arrest, um, spot check, in order to make sure that uh, these people stay at home. There are a few cases of uh, contraventions. The Department of Health as well as uh, the uh, Department, uh, Department of Justice are working on the possible prosecution. There is another matter that is in relation to supply of personal protective equipment, including masks. I'd like to say that uh, there is a global shortage. 
in a number of places, we have seen uh, people scrambling for uh, masks. We have uh, adopted a multi-pronged approach. We have stepped up on uh, global procurement. What we do now is uh, direct procurement, not uh, by use of um, the, low, uh, the lowest bidder wins. We use the most uh, the speediest way to procure what we need. I ask um, the CS4A to be in charge of that. With under his leadership, policy bureau as well as department have uh, taken measures uh, to compress use. It has been compressed uh, to about eight million every month. Most of the use are related uh, to emergency use and uh, those uh, in relation to fighting the infection. A lot of them have been used by the Department of Health. There are also a number of departments uh, that need to use masks, um, but they have something to do with uh, infection control. Given the shortage, we identified um, priority for uh, the use of masks of two groups of people, namely uh, outsourced cleaning workers, as well as um, all the residential care homes for elderly people, as well as uh, those for people with uh, disability. That includes uh, those in the public and the private sector. We must ensure that, that there is adequate supply for these two groups of users. Every month for uh, cleaners, every month they use about 700,000 for um, different homes every month uh, they will use about uh, 1 million in order to ensure that we have the ability to fight the contagion as well as to ensure that we can continue with public service we have um, stock to meet a uh, two months use that includes uh, use for uh, from cleaners as well as uh, from homes. We understand that there is, still, there is a shortage in the retail market. A lot of people have to scramble for masks. Recently, we have received about 1.6 million masks in different badges given to uh, the government. They will be donated uh, to various uh, groups, mainly the underprivileged. We will ask um, non-government organizations to distribute them for us. We hope that given the shortage in resources, we will all work together to fight against um, the contagion. We've been preparing for this Contagion Control and Prevention Fund with two objectives. One is to step up or bring the whole city together for fighting this epidemic. We have facing a critical picture. We still need to take the containment strategy to um, cut off this transmission chain for each Hong Kong citizen we need to step, um, heighten their awareness and maintain their personal hygiene and environmental hygiene, which will put a big role in finding this contagion. That's why we need to allocate extra resources. For this, um, contagion control and prevention can provide instant assistance and also support the depressed sectors and employees. We would do our best to prevent our large scale uh, laid up and bankruptcies. When you go with the details, let me reiterate that some of these are, are more macro uh, spectra and relief measures will not be stated here. They will be fall under the uh, 26th of February budget unveiled by the Financial Secretary, which include the review of the four founder relief measures that have been launched earlier, whether they need to be extended or stepped up. For the full round of relief measures, we involve about $25 billion. The first thing we have to do is to uh, step up the um, anti-epidemic efforts. The following measures. The first is to ensure the supply of faces and other personal protective equipment. The first, the government will uh, spend money for on global procurement. And uh, some of the business sector hope that the Hong Kong can manufacturing locally. The government is very supportive of this, and in the past period, have been in touch with them and providing the support the need. Today, we just take a new step. We actually would pay them to subsidize them to set up the local production lines for face masks. 
So that's for the private enterprises. In the past, uh, the government rarely ventured into this. So basically uh, financing these local companies to set up the manufacturing production lines in locally. First is to subsidize the research and the manufacturing of reusable face masks. We hope that every citizen can provide a durable and reusable face mask, surgical mask. On the other hand, we we'll continue our anti epidemic efforts can carry on a sustainable pace. And a lot of uh, areas we have uh, people joining the front lines, we need to provide adequate resources for them. First will be the hospital authority. We will disperse extra $4.7 billion to the hospital authority. If you're interested in the details, uh, the Professor Sophia Chan will give you the details. And the Department of Health uh, don't need to do through this fund because it's a government department. In this financial year, at the next year's uh, uh, budget, we will we'll provide enough budget for them to cope with the, necess the, the extra expenses and also step up the electronic surveillance of home quarantine w with the wristbands and all kind of electronic devices. Six, enhance the efficiency for smartphones to re um, disseminate emergency messages, which we found it to be very effective that they're issuing and, and messages to the smartphone users to know that which border crossing, border crossing had been closed and what happened where. And currently, the efficiency had room for improvement, and we need to spend resources so that to enhance the efficiency. Seven. Well, for the construction industry, will resume work very soon, so we need to uh, step up the provide more professional equipment. Uh, and provide one-off funding, and for the 0.24 million workers, provide a one-off subsidy to purchase the protective equipment. Six on property management, to maintain environmental hygiene, the property management company had a key role to play. The Hong Kong government will make use of this fund to provide that all the public and powerful property of a one-off twenty-six thousand dollars MB epidemic allowance including um, to, well, during the epidemic to provide an $1,000 extra allowance for each uh, cleanser and security employed. And the same $1,000 extra allowance also applies to the transit worker under government contract and also with security guards. And during the epidemic, we will we'll provide extra funding for the contractors so that they can provide the cleanser and the security uh, guards for this extra $1,000 allowance. So hope make use of the soon to be occupied public housing units for quality facilities. Even though we couldn't use the first one as destroyed by the rioters. However, we need well for those families have been allocated a unit in this two estate into Chunyong Estate in Fo Chan and Fai Ming Estate in Fan Ling would you issue a one of six thousand dollars special allowance. To support the um, depressed sectors and the employees. Well, a lot of sectors have been affected. Well, however, those bought the brunt will be the travel industry and the food and beverage industry and retail industry. Thus, for the license agency, will release a one of $80,000 subsidy. And for the uh, licensed restaurant and and those holding the gen restaurant license and those um, factory canteen license, they will receive a two hundred thousand dollars allowance. And the uh, the uh, uh, snack uh, restaurant and food manufacturers and fetch provision shops and the seal may and shop will give it a eighty thousand dollars allowance, and will receive a one of eighty thousand allowance to the retail uh, industry. This do not. A license holder. Of course, they hold a business registration. However, they're not a license. However, we need to spend some time to ascertain the scope of the beneficiaries. And for the license holders, we receive a one of five thousand dollars allowance. And some of the sectors have also been hard hit. And more critically, this uh, sectors. Well, then we let you lay off if they lost the momentum well uh, they will not be able to uh, recover along the economy so we need to provide them instant relief uh, to prop them up for the time being 
I hope that by the, the time at the bank phase that this industry continue to thrive, which include the convention and meeting industry, the cultural sectors in performing troops, and also the in the IT sector, especially the tenants in the science park and the seven port. If they don't have any business and no prospect and couldn't afford the rent, though they will be uh, full very easily. And now we need to um, maintain the social distancing. A lot of the retraining work has ceased. So uh, for the agency working with the employee retraining board, we will provide a subsidy. And some other sectors have also been mentioned. For example, the uh, child care centers and the kindergarten, especially the fee paying ones. That besides we receive government subsidy, they also ch charge fees. Well, for quite some time, this class have been suspended. They're able to uh, get the tuition fees. And for the uh, self-financing and the aided child care center receive subsidy. And the EDB will provide the kindergartens and provide a one-off subsidy. Well, uh, water for uh, those aid or uh, aid cutters, however, the EDB do not need to pay from this fund because they can meet it through their own funding. Since uh, the class have been suspended, and students will need to learn at home, and sometimes the students will need to meet some extra expenses, for example, like on online learning. So for the 2019-20 student learning grant, we will we'll have this extra $1,000 for each student. And since the grant will be released soon, well, for the $2,500, will uh, uh, increase to $3,500. And there are about 200,000 low-income households will provide a one-off special allowance with about an average of uh, $5,000 per household. We will not uh, do mean testing whether they are employed or semi-employed or unemployed. That all these low income house will will provide them at five thousand dollars each on average the secretary for labor welfare can elaborate on a bit of details the next step send this an, an urgent and necessary would the beneficiaries hope to obtain the uh, funding very soon so we must seize the time and go on free speed the SEO government will apply that one of uh, funding proposal through the Finance Committee of the LegCo with no less than two twenty-five billion dollars, which included twenty-one projects and some kind of contingency funding. Hope that this uh, funding approval can from FC can be given as soon as possible. Contingency uh, funding depends on the how the epidemic unfolds. We will able to cope with it rapidly. We understand that a lot of LegCo members have much criticism inquiries on the government's work on funding this epidemic and hope to raise questions. Uh, note that the electrical president have decided that on next Wednesday on 19th of February they will not hold a regular council meeting. Instead they will have this one special meeting to let members to raise questions on the epidemic. The CSFA would attend along with other secretary to respond to part the, the members' questions. Since is a very urgent, and today, today we have a, a public health emergency. And for the 21 measures have outlined, we have a large number of beneficiaries. Thus, uh, we have uh, read, written to the Mr. Paul Chen of the President of the Chairman of the Finance Secretary. They hope to hold a special meeting next week. I believe that it should be after 19th of February. Well, after this de debate, oh, inquiry on the 19th of February and allow the members to grasp the latest progress. Then we can uh, discuss this funding request at the Finance Committee. And here I um, urge the electrical members to support this funding proposal and the implementation. We need to seize the time to go on a full throttle. So in coming with the 21 measures, we'd also take into account the implementation that we hope to be as simple as possible and so I directly disperse this funding to the beneficiaries. Like I said, uh, when it comes to the retail sector, it's not a licensed uh, regime in place, thus it will uh, take more f steps. If the licensed uh, restaurants or a agency, so uh, things are much more simple. So we'll 
try to implement it as soon as possible. This end of my presentation. We're now open the floor to questions. And secretaries, we're happy to take your questions. Now it's question time. Please put up your hand uh, and identify uh, the organization you represent first. I'm from Cable TV. I would like to ask about what you mentioned. That is, uh, Diamond Princess. You make you said you would make arrangements uh, for Hong Kong people to come back to Hong Kong. The quarantine order is going to come to an end, but we still have yet to hear details. Are you going to use a chartered flight or what? What about uh, um, Hong Kongers uh, who have who are stranded in Hubei, Wuhan? We're talking about more than two thousand people. Some of them said that um, they have almost exhausted the uh, medication they have brought with them, and they don't know what to do. What is the government going to do to help them? Just now you talk about a subsidy to help a local businessmen to produce masks here. What are the details? Can you give us more information? In relation to the uh, two cases of Hong Kongers uh, who are still um, outside Hong Kong. We attach a lot of importance to it. The Secretary for Security as well as the Secretary for uh, Constitutional Affairs and Mainland uh, Constitutional and Mainland Affairs are responsible for making the arrangements. I will defer to the two secretaries to give you a progress of our work. In relation to pro the provision of uh, subsidy to um, private uh, to the private sector to produce masks, uh, I would defer to another secretary. For Diamond Princess, who is at the moment birthed at o Oklahoma, as at the information we've received today, there are 218 confirmed cases involving 11 Hong Kongers. There are about uh, 330 Hong Kong residents. There are 260 of them hold Hong Kong SAR passports. 70 of them hold um, passports of other countries. There may be Hong Kong residents holding passports of a, a different of a, another country. We believe that the number may increase, but the extent of the increase may be small. We have sent a four immigration officers to go to Japan to liaise with RETO as well as um, the uh, uh, consulate of uh, China to provide assistance. Uh, that includes to provide to about 50 Hong Kong residents medication they need and to about a dozen Hong Kong residents. The uh, medication is provided by the uh, liner co cruise liner company. We also have given them a little uh, goodie bag with um, masks, uh, some cleansing equipment, as well as um, sanitizing uh, liquid. We have made a proposal to the Japanese authorities for Hong Kong residents to be quarantined on land and for tests to be done as soon as possible. As far as we know that the Japanese authorities will accord priority to uh, those over the age of 70 with symptoms. They will first start with those over the age of 80. 80. As far as we know that there is one Hong Kong resident who is over the age of 80. He, um, they would go through with the rapid tests. If the test is uh, positive, the person will be sent to hospital. If it is negative, the person can choose to be quarantined on board the cruise ship or on land. But they will uh, deal with these cases in accordance with the priority. The uh, Security Bureau has uh, formed um, um, a, a working group, including um, the uh, a transport and Housing Bureau and uh, various bureaus. We will continue to liaise with um, uh, the Foreign uh, Aff Affairs um, Ministry as well as um, uh, the Consulate as well as the ETO to get a better understanding of the situation. We want to know when will the Japanese authorities allow Hong Kong residents to leave the cruise ship to and to leave 
Japan, whether they will be done in batches and how many people will be in each batch. Then we will make arrangements for them to come back to Hong Kong as, as soon as possible, and we will also map out um, the way forward from then. In relation to Hong Kong residents in Hubei province, we have uh, attached a lot of importance to that. As we've said, our Wuhan office and the immigration working group have been following up on these cases. We've also liaised um, with um, the relevant um, authorities in, in the provincial government to provide assistance. We know that there are, uh, there are about uh, 1,100 uh, cases for that, that calls for assistance involving about um, 2,200 people covering about 30 cities in uh, Hubei province. Some of them are rather uh, are at remote locations. Most of these cases involve um, traveling or visiting their relatives. So what happened was out of their expectation, and they would like to come back to Hong Kong as soon as possible. We have made arrangements for 90 uh, people who do not need medication to liaise uh, with the Department of Health. We have sent uh, two batches of medication to uh, about 30 households. And the third and the fourth batch will reach Wuhan, and the fifth batch is on its way. Given the various locations, uh, the medication will reach Wuhan, and then they will be distributed to the, uh, those in need. We have also set up a hotline under the Department of Health to provide health advice. We have received calls from uh, 50 people. We have also provided um, contacts of online doctors in Wuhan. We're also aware that an NGO has uh, set up um, a hotline for uh, emotional support. We have been taking up uh, follow-up work. Since we have received the first call for assistance, we have been conducting assessments and making arrangements for them to come back to Hong Kong. Our main consideration is first, public health risk, and uh, secondly, practicality. We aim to find a practicable solution that can be executed. We have not stopped at all. We have liaised with different departments on, uh, on the planning. Apart from dealing with cross-infection when they're traveling back to Hong Kong, which involve details, we also have to consider a sufficient capacity for a quarantine center. Given the a sheer number of um, people involved, we have to do it by batches. We have to uh, map out our plans well. Well, um, the utilization rate of our quarantine centers have reached 90%. We know that um, our capacity is increasing, but we hope that we, there will be sufficient capacity. We will get the support from uh, the local community and their understanding. We will liaise with relevant bureaus and department hoping to um, start the process as soon as possible. Well, there are about uh, 10 Hong Kong residents that, that have confirmed, have been confirmed to have contracted uh, the illness. How long will it take for you to plan before, uh, to map your plan before they can be brought back to Hong Kong? We will do it as soon as possible. And as soon as practicable, we aim to provide assistance uh, to bring them back to Hong Kong. Mr. Yao, thank you for the question. In the past month, given the acute shortage of masks, uh, some industrialists and people who want to do something say that if the uh, line of production can be brought back to Hong Kong, it will allay the shortage. As I've said, we have entrusted the Productivity Council to conduct uh, a, 
a technical study. They have contacted about a dozen people who ha who are interested. The major um, uh, issues to be to to deal with is um, a sterile uh, is uh, a, is um, f factory funding, machinery, plants, as as well as uh, um, a steady order. Well, uh, what we're trying to do is to uh, group people who are interested uh, together so that it can happen. We have engaged the Productivity Council to provide a one-stop professional service. They will group together people who are interested and they will process the application. We would like to make use of, uh, of a subsidy. If a line of production can be brought to Hong Kong, we will uh, provide direct subsidy. For every line of uh, production, we will provide a uh, starting uh, operation fund of about several million dollars. We will help them to find factories uh, or locations, whether they are in industrial estates or not. Um, we will help them to find um, factories with the right environment. If they can continue to operate, then they need a steady uh, stream of orders coming in. So, uh, so we hope that uh, there will be a continuous uh, demand for masks. So we will undertake that um, the government will procure a certain number of um, masks at a reasonable price over a period of time. So we will provide technical support. We will provide a f subsidy. We will also give them an undertaking to procure a certain number. So we hope that um, manufacturing can take place in Hong Kong. Compared to uh, other uh, local manu um, manufacturing, like that will be different from uh, local other local manufacturing, say, for example, the uh, correctional services. Apart from that, I. I'm aware that uh, the Innovation and Technology Bureau um, will also provide assistance in the production of reusable masks. Next question. Green? The second one. Our into daily news. Two questions. Some healthcare worker complained that eight of those under uh, home quarantine under visited the Rutanji Hospital. So, uh, is that an uh, implementation and, and execution shortcomings? We consider tightening the compulsory quarantine, and there have been a month um, for the first confirmed case for the range of measures you just outlined. Are uh, using money to um, allay public resentment? The public is still scrambling for face masks. Will the government officials need to be accountable and step down? I'll take the second question and let the so Professor So Chan to talk about the first case. Even though it was unverified, our anti-epidemic work, our difficulty is that we are coping with uh, lots of um, false news and misinformation rumors. When it have a high uh, public health hazard, the public have led to panic. The government had already uh, picked up the space in refuting rumors and misinformation. May I appeal to the, the media that the public should do their own fact-checking and should not easily subscribe to this online um, rumors or false news. As for the Epidemic Prevention and Control Fund is a key aspect of our effort. On the 1st of February, when talk about the anti-epidemic strategy, I have uh, first uh, for the idea and when the public see the range of concrete measures they generally will agree that after this uh, challenge there are lots of places we need to govern we need to uh, provide financial support so that they can uh, survive this epidemic thus I don't have no other consideration with the only consideration being that we hope to uh, together fight the disease. Professor Chen, 
allow me to talk about the compulsory quarantine order. Just now, the CE has said that for those subject to compulsory quarantine, there are 5,360 people. Now, the Hong Kong residents made up a majority, about 4,782. Now, in Hong Kong residents, at about 580. Which is over 95% are having the quarantine at home. Well, with some of those are in our quarantine camps. As for the case you referred to, we're currently investigating, but let me reiterate. Well, for the figures I just disclosed to you, if you have returned to mainland in the past 14 days, whether you're Hong Kong or mainland resident or from elsewhere, you need to go under this compulsory quarantine. And the Department of Health, Port Health Division, will issue a quarantine order to that individual. And some of the per persons will enjoy exemptions, which I stated, for example, uh, the, uh, the uh, truck drive, the car freight drivers, and so on. So we need to investigate it for those who've been to mainland in the past 14 days, are they under ex exempt categories, or they are bound by the compulsory quarantine order. For those under compulsory home quarantine, a huge majority of those have exercised self-discipline and stay at their home. And through a uh, real-time location sharing and these electronic devices, together with the spot checks, the government will ensure their stay at their homes. Well, uh, uh, some time ago, we stated there are two individuals who were not able to demonstrate they were at home. Through the Department of Health and the police, uh, they have worked together to investigate which said uh, there were one elderly man that he went down to bought some food and the Department of Health had explained to them that under this manager quarantine you could not leave your home and where necessary the social welfare department can provide the assistance and this elderly man had promised that she would not breach the quarantine order again and another was an elderly lady well, uh, um, sh her, sh her handwriting on the address is unclear. Thus, the police were not able to locate her when, when visiting her. And she was eventually located, and demonstrated that, and she would stay at their home for the whole period. In the past two days, there are three individuals that under quarantine attempted to leave Hong Kong. The Immigration Department and the Department of Health has successfully intercepted them and subsequently sent to a uh, quarantine camp with security around the clock. And the Department of Health and the police are currently collecting evidence and they will um, refer to the Department of Justice to, for prosecution consideration. Well, since it's quarantine is critical and this compulsory quarantine order would need to be strictly enforced and obeyed. Thus, the Secretary of Justice has also taken part of this prosecution work. So we will we'll deal with this strictly and hope that it could uh, have an effect for those who are under the quarantine order will not breach it. The Secretary of Chen about mentioned about our, our cover drivers. Well, uh, there are some members of public worried that whether there are sufficient supplies in the market besides the PPE and face mask. On 10th of 13th of February, uh, the, the number of uh, tr uh, uh, tr trips, freight car trips, uh, may increase because we still maintain the five land ports. From 10th of February, when the mainland resumed work, it was uh, 3,900 trips, and for yesterday, have increased to 5,800 trips into Hong Kong. 
Well, today I've inquired uh, the head of customer exercise, and he replied from an observation and the frontline officers that this inbound cargo drivers are loaded. 70% are carry a full load with categories of very fresh produce like pork, fish, and eggs, and frozen meat, and toilet paper, and tissue boxes, sanitation supplies, and electronic devices, plastic bottles. Thus, once again, appeal to the public that please don't uh, scramble for the for major supplies to so we can maintain the smooth flow of goods. I now defer to this Secretary for Security on about the enforcement. Thank you. I announce here that starting from tomorrow, apart from the police who would conduct spot checks, we have also four discipline services involved in doing spot checks, namely the Immigration Department, the CNE Department, the Correctional uh, Services Department, as well as the Fire Services Department. When they conduct spot checks, they will wear the uh, un their uh, respective uniform. They will wear their um, official vests. They will also show their official identity card. So please be aware that uh, five discipline services will conduct um, the uh, the work. Thank you, Richard from RTHK. Um, when you work out how to bring um, the Hong Kong residents back from the Diamond Princess, um, will they be subject to further quarantine when they get back to Hong Kong? And secondly, are you concerned about the conditions that they're being kept in while they're on the Diamond Princess, particularly this sort of uh, close confinement where the virus can sort of spread faster maybe? And um, Mrs. Lam, there's been a lot of criticism of this administration's handling of this crisis from the border closures to sort of the panic buying on the streets. Are you worried that um, that may lead to lawmakers sort of holding up this funding request? Well, I answer the last question and then perhaps um, uh, the two colleagues uh, could help to address uh, this uh, question about this uh, cruise. Well, uh, since the notification uh, was received in Hong Kong on the um, 31st of December, it's now past uh, one and a half months, the Hong Kong SL government has put in every effort to fight this uh, virus infection. And uh, this is um, um, something that um, friends of the media could see because you have been coming to these uh, press conferences and media briefing on a very regular basis. Uh, so we will continue to uh, work very hard uh, based on our very good track record in our public health experience and expertise, based on the advisory panel experts who have been with us all along in this uh, past six weeks, and based on the um, dedication of our colleagues and the amount of resources that this government is prepared to put into this uh, fight against the disease. Uh, today's initiative to announce the setting up of this fund with uh, an estimated amount of 25 billion is again one of those commitments to the, um, the people of Hong Kong. Um, so my biggest uh, concern now is really for us to overcome this uh, public health crisis together and so that uh, we could then focus on relaunching Hong Kong and rebuilding Hong Kong's uh, economic strength. Uh, regarding uh, the Hong Kong people who are being capped on Diamond Princess, of course we are very concerned and we care for the well-being. Uh, that is why we have sent officers, four immigration officers, to Japan to work with uh, economic and trade office uh, there together with uh, people from the Chinese embassy to give them the best support and assistance that we can offer. We have already uh, indicated uh, to the Japanese authorities whether uh, they can consider allowing them to do the quarantine on land and also whether uh, the Hong Kong people can be tested uh, as soon as possible. Uh, the immigration officers together with the officers from the uh, ETO office uh, at, the, at Japan and also the, Hong Kong, uh, the Chinese embassy's uh, officials have been uh, keeping contact with the Hong Kong people. Uh, we are offering uh, what we can do uh, so as to satisfy their need. Uh, a lot of them are asking for assistance in getting the medicine they need. 
Already, immigration officers have provided fifth, about 50 uh, Hong Kong uh, people with the medicine they need. And also, there are about 17 to uh, 18 people who have received the required medicine through uh, the cruise. We also learned that uh, the Japanese authority uh, will be conducting uh, tests uh, by selecting people as the first batch who are over 70 years, ago, 70 years old together with symptoms uh, such as fever. And those who are tested uh, positive uh, will be sent to hospital for treatment. Those who are uh, tested negative, they will be given a choice to uh, either do the quarantine uh, on board the ship or on land. Uh, we understand that there is one uh, Hong Kong lady over 80 years who will be in the first batch of uh, testing. Uh, the Security Bureau has already set up a working group uh, to look at how we can arrange these people to come back to Hong Kong as soon as possible. Uh, officials uh, of this working group includes uh, officers from the Secretary Bureau, Immigration Department, uh, the Food and Health Bureau, uh, Health Department, uh, and various uh, government departments who are experienced in uh, arranging transportation and offering us assistance. What we are doing uh, is liaising closely with the Japanese authorities so as to uh, get the first-hand information as quickly as possible. Some questions we want to get answers from the Japanese authority include uh, how soon will uh, these Hong Kong people be allowed to uh, uh, disembark and how soon they will be allowed to, uh, to leave Japan for Hong Kong whether they will be allowed to disembark in groups, uh, how big uh, each group will be, how many, how, many, how many days it may take. These are the things that we want to get uh, information from the Japanese authority as soon as possible so that the working group can look at all these things to work out how we can, uh, as soon as possible, arrange uh, for the Hong Kong people to come back. We will also look at how we will deal with them. Uh, when they are returned. If I may just uh, supplement and answer uh, your specific question about what will happen to these uh, residents upon uh, return to Hong Kong, this is a public health uh, matter, so I can assure you that uh, it will still be guided by the experts' uh, advice. Uh, I have, in fact, uh, briefly raised this matter with the experts already, and the experts' advice will in turn be based on epidemiological evidence. That's why uh, Hong Kong uh, Center for health protection is now liaising with the Japanese health authorities to try to get as much information as possible so that the experts could then give us advice on how to deal with the, with the, uh, the returnees. Well, basically, our primary objective is to uh, look after the health and the safety of these Hong Kong people returning to Hong Kong and also the overall public health situation requirements in Hong Kong. Any more English questions? Gentlemen David. Hi, hi, Mrs. Lam. It's Alvin from South China Morning Post. About two weeks ago, you've mentioned about bringing those in Hubei back home, but there are uh, practically little progress to be announced. Could you promise um, the people of Hong Kong that you would try to first bring those um, vulnerables, including those aged children uh, with long-term illness from Wuhan and Hubei back home first? And if so, when is that possible? And also to accommodate um, those from uh, returning from Japan or Hubei potentially subjecting to quarantines, uh, could um, Secretary Yao enlighten us whether you plan to use the lens around Disney, or are you in discussion with Disney uh, to build some quarantine sites around that place? Uh, what's the progress of discussion? When's this going to be ready? My second question concerns the 25 billion uh, will be uh, tabled to electrical pretty soon. This is probably one of the um, uh, large, given that amount is, and, the, and the speed is going to be tabled, uh, that was sort of unprecedented. Is, uh, for lawmakers, Ms. Lam, is there practically a choice for them 
to uh, considering these proposals, or do they have them to bargain in terms of the where these should be used and uh, what's your message for them? And thank you, uh, third, in thank terms you, of thank you. I think you have raised enough. Thank you. Well, I answer the um, the question about this uh, funding, and then invite the Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs to address the the uh, Hubei um, um, Hong Kong people. Um, Yes, this is a pretty large sum of money, uh, but we are facing an almost unprecedented uh, situation. Uh, and we are still in the midst of this particular situation, which uh, is still evolving. And I, sub I, I, I suppose people should look at the content. Uh, in, at this time, the government has taken some bold and decisive step to help different sectors and also to ensure that we can continue to undertake all the um, um, infection control measures that have been put in place. So uh, if uh, members of the public and members of the Legislative Council uh, do feel that each and every of those initiatives uh, is necessary, then the amount is not um, the most important factor. Because if you want to do all these things, then you need to get the money. And I'm going to apply also for a contingency because, as I said, the situation is evolving. So uh, in an emergency situation, which we are in, you remember that when I introduced uh, the regulations uh, made by the Executive Council, that was premised on the uh, declaration of Hong Kong uh, entering into a public health emergency. So I feel that uh, these measures are justified, and they have taken into account the feedback given to us by Legislative Council members, and also expressed in public, uh, and uh, from the various sectors. So I would uh, very much hope that uh, members of a legislative council will not bargain uh, with us and will accept that these measures are essential uh, given the current situation. Okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Nip. Yeah. Um, our colleagues in the uh, Wuhan Economic and Trade Office, together with the Immigration Department's uh, colleagues, uh, have been uh, following up and uh, rendering the uh, necessary support and assistance um, to those uh, Hong Kong people stranded in uh, Hubei. Uh, up till now, uh, we receive uh, more than 1,100 uh, case, cases involving more than uh, 2,200 uh, Hong Kong people. Um, we have been maintaining contact with them and uh, also uh, arranging uh, sending drugs to those in need uh, by batches. And some, some have already arrived and some are on the way. And, and also providing them with hotlines and, uh, and all these uh, necessary assistance and support. Um, from day one upon receipt of, uh, receipt of the assistance uh, cases, um, we have already started uh, the contingency planning um, because uh, we obviously know that uh, for those who uh, you know, uh, visited uh, Hubei uh, to visit their relatives, um, they did not anticipate that they have to stay there for so long and they are anxious to come back. Um, so uh, we, we have already started and are planning uh, for, uh, the, uh, re for the return uh, arrangements. Um, so uh, given the uh, numbers, um, we of course will take into account um, you know, the, uh, the actual the way of doing this, including uh, the, you know, the possibility of by badges uh, and also how to uh, prevent uh, cross-infection uh, during the process uh, on the return trip um, and also um, the uh, proper arrangement for uh, quarantine. Uh, upon return to Hong Kong. So we have been doing that and we, have, we will try our uh, very best um, to, um, to, um, to, to, to complete these uh, arrangements, uh, taking into account the actual situations, um, particularly the, um, the uh, availability of uh, uh, quarantine facilities of sufficient uh, capacity. Secretary Yao. Oh, yeah. I, I, as um, Secretary for Constitution and <coughs> Main Affairs mentioned, well, Obviously, we, we need all sorts of um, quarantine facility for surveillance, and therefore, well, basically, we try to leave no stone unturned. I think this is a job that well, the, the entire government is putting our heads together. Uh, as far as your, your question on uh, the use of phase two um, land uh, for, for Destiny for Destiny Park expansion is concerned, we have secured uh, the consent of the company to uh, offer part of the site for this purpose if it is eventually needed. So, but obviously, that, that would not provide an immediate sort of a capacity to handle the situation now. But basically, I think if need be, that could be one of the possibilities that we are considering. Thank you. 
I don't have the I don't have the exact uh, uh, configuration yet because well basically we are looking at various sort of uh, options and obviously uh, there are sort of a planned facility for immediate uh, surface uh, which uh, I think uh, uh, the health department has identified but it's a sort of a medium or longer term thing, things and well basically uh, we identify any any possible sort of a space available in in that regard we have. Uh, uh, got the consent of the company for, for, for designating part of it for, for use. Maybe to give you an overall picture, because quarantine facilities are extremely essential uh, in our operation and also uh, uh, in situations when the two groups of um, Hong Kong people are returning to Hong Kong and require quarantine. So uh, in addition to the, um, the centers that we are already uh, using, very much uh, to the full capacity, uh, the um, public housing estate in uh, Zhenyang estate is extremely important. Uh, and on top of that, we are embarking on in situ expansion in the Lei Yumun holiday camp. So it's within an existing camp, we find some uh, vacant uh, land and we are going to build on that vacant land. Uh, actually, I went to see that particular site earlier this week. We are also doing similar work in the Saigon outdoor recreation camp. And uh, we are also uh, planning to use uh, the uh, police uh, department's Bat Herong Junior Police Call Center. And on this, I must thank the police for uh, letting us use the Bat Herong Center. Um, to find a vacant piece of land uh, to build uh, additional units uh, is also on our, uh, uh, on our radar screen, so to speak. Yeah, thank you. Joe, thank you. Last two questions. Uh, Ming Tao Daily News. For the Hubei Hong Kong residents, when they asked the secretary, do you have a target when you return them? How for you to fail to give a target? Can you state explicitly, do you have a deadline when you bring them back? The, well, we have a quite case of uh, confirmed cases, and would the government be held responsible? For the quarantine facilities, can you state that, could it him that the hotels and cruise ships are not suitable to receive the Hubei Hong Kong residents for such a high risk group? Would the public housing estate the most suitable facility? Would the government would consider the public housing units? And for the uh, epidemic fund, it seems to be very targeted for the retail sector. You're distributing eighty thousand dollars for them. They may they put much much more after paying the rent. Would it call this um spraying cash? Every, some political parties advocating distributing ten thousand dollars for each Hong Kong people. Would the government consider it? For the hard hit sectors, when providing the kind of support, if you still see that at um, giving money unconditionally, that would be correct. We choose to take a target approach to help this hardest hit industry. So I see this as clear enough. Well, for those hardest hit sectors, are mostly travel and F and B and the retail sectors. And for the other relief uh, measures for the public, that uh, the upcoming budget on the February 26th, <coughs> where, where it would be announced. So this round of measures is really related to the epidemic prevention and c containment and control. <coughs> and for other kind of relief measures, that the finance secretary, after consultation for this past few months, is currently in the works. Um, so please be patient and save it for the February 26th where the budget will be unveiled. As for the quarantine facilities, I had explained earlier that we are in the sh much shortage of them. We need more uh, quarantine facilities. For the Chunyang Estate in Fochan is the key supply since they have provided uh, quite a number of units. And uh, however, we would uh, consider all kinds of possibilities. For example, for the Lei Yimun Holiday Village, we'll try to locate vacant site and to add more units. And for the Cyclone Outdoor Recreation Center and the Junior Police Call Pat Hyung Activity Center, we'll also uh, had in the works. And also identified the vacant sites to build the units would also be planned. I'll now defer to uh, Secretary Nip, for the Hubei Hong Kong residents, all along, we've been doing assessment and the preparation 
and the actual planning with various departments. A few things to consider. Well, for a number of the Hong Kong residents and also they're being uh, scattered throughout the province, uh, should they return in batches? Then what would the arrangement be? And in the process, how do we prevent the cross infection? Well, of course, we would have a very uh, strict uh, process also would consult the public health experts and also due to the sheer number that we need to have that adequate uh, quarantine arrangements and our quarantine facilities have all been close to a saturation at the same time we are also taking steps to in boost the number of quarantine facilities so uh, we need to provide such capacity to handle the script of Hong Kong residents and also we uh, get the understanding of the local residents which would allow us to implement this arrangement. When it comes to the execution and the activation of the plan, we will need to uh, consult with and cooperation with the local authorities because a lot in that province the public transport is as a standstill. Thus uh, we need to coordinate with the uh, pr uh, provincial government so we will conduct it and complete our plan as soon as possible and at the right time we will activate such arrangements. Hi. The relation to rent indeed for um, F&B as well as uh, retail rent is a heavy burden for them. Previously I have made an open appeal to landlords in Hong Kong to work with um, everyone and uh, and to reduce their their rent we have uh, contacted reader they have uh, actively replied to us they have also um, issued a statement they said that, that they have taken into account the difficult times faced by F&B as well as um, the retail sector in the spirit of Riding the storm with Hong Kong, they have uh, made arrangements to reduce rent. In the past two days, we have received information uh, from um, the restaurant sector as well as the retail sector saying that their landlords have provided them with uh, some kind of rental relief. Well, there are government um, premises being leased out. In previous relief uh, measures, we have offered these um, rental relief if they are about to to expire we will uh, review as to whether there is a need to extend the arrangement the airport authority the ura urban renewal authority um, um, the ntrcl as well as the housing authority we have asked them to consider a possible rental um, reduction last question i'm from now tv I'd like to ask Mrs. Lam. She said that uh, the government has received uh, some masks donation. The HA said that they only have stock to last for about one month. Why do you not choose to uh, give them the mask? Uh, do you think that um, about the $4.7 billion is enough? Uh, do you think that the $4.7 billion is enough? Will that be subsidy given to the frontline staff? I'd like, to, I'd like to also ask about the Hong Kong residents in Wu Hubei. Is it the case that as long as there is not enough capacity in a quarantine center, you will not arrange for them to come back? About 10 people have been uh, infected uh, with, the, with the illness, and they've been there for about half a month. And how come they're still not uh, brought back? I will answer some questions first. If uh, there are proposals to make donations uh, to the government, very often we'll ask them to donate directly to the hospital authority. That is something that is happening. In view of the fact that um, with the ende endeavor of uh, Dr. Uh, Cole, the uh, CEO, uh, they are doing something about the management of their resources. As I said, that um, we, we need to work together. So the donation of about 1.6 million masks will be distributed to the underprivileged, as, um, including the elderly, through NGOs. In the future, if we receive further donation, we may give them to the underprivileged or, or, or the hospital authority.
If anyone wants to make a donation of masks, similarly, they may donate directly to the hospital authority or to a charitable organization for them to be um, to be given to those in need. If there are people who would like to uh, give us donations, unless we are in um, dire need of the resources, we would share them. As the chief executive said, the hospital authority receives uh, donations in the form of masks and um, personal protective equipment. Well, the uh, additional funding to the hospital authority under the fund is to is for the issuance of subsidy to uh, their staff. As you know, that in relation to protective gear, there has been an increase in use. So there will be additional resources available to uh, improve the personal protective equipment. There may be some uh, healthcare staff who would like to maybe stay uh, elsewhere, say for example a hotel, uh, subsidies will be given to them. We have conducted more tests. These tests are done in laboratories and that also includes um, testing equipment. We have to enhance them as well. On top of that, there is also the overall cleansing uh, and cleaning. We need additional resources. I'd like to talk about support uh, to Hong Kong residents in Hubei. The Wuhan office has uh, staff have stayed there, and they have been in close contact with Hong Kong people in uh, Wuhan and. Pro they, pro they are provided with the most updated information. If they need medication, well, they will be contacted to get uh, details of the medication. Mm, sometimes we do it through the hospital authority. Sometimes we do it through private clinics. Transportation of medication is not as easy as it sounds because transportation has ground to a halt. Some of the medication has already reached uh, those in need, and that will continue. We would provide them with assistance. We would like to bring them back to Hong Kong as soon as possible, but we need to have a good plan. And that is our priority, and it's something we've been working on. In relation to quarantine facilities and arrangements, they are equally important. We need to take into account uh, the, um, the, sit the the epidemic situation in Hong Kong as well as public health. When uh, Hong Kong, when these Hong Kong people come back to Hong Kong, we have to pay We have to take care of their health. We have to take care of public health. We see that there will be additional uh, quarantine facilities in the pipeline. We hope that we'll be able to. Um, liaise with mainland authorities to make things happen. That's the end of the uh, press conference. Thank you.